だ誰じゃね君は俺はヒーローをやっているものだワンパンチマンズ being one of the most entertaining and popular anime of recent times That being said, I settled on a video highlighting the top moments in One Punch Man. That's right, I wanted to make a compilation that's all about our beloved, albeit a tad bit lazy, hero who sacrificed his hair for power. I know, totally an original list video, but hey, I'm a sucker for epic battles. So put up your jukes and get ready for this list. We start off the list highlighting the battle from the very first episode, that's Saitama vs. the Giant Man. A regular dude called Marugori became the towering mutant menace Giant Man after taking the ultimate steroid drug Biceps Brachi King that his scientist older brother created. These two, though mainly it was Giant Man's doing while his brother egged him on, caused a lot of damage to various cities. Finally, Saitama steps in and lives up to his name as he literally knocks Giant Man out. <laughs> Not straying too far from episode one, at number nine we have Saitama's next opponent, the Subterranean People. Keeping in the introduction arc, this next battle was a bit uh, unusual. First, a mysterious assailant attacked Saitama while he was relaxing in his apartment, and when he tried to fend them off, his usual one-hit KO didn't work. Secondly, the assailant belongs to a large group of creatures called the Subterraneans. Their home within the Earth's crust is overpopulated, and they've come to seize the surface world for new real estate. And as if the regular Subterranean people weren't bad enough, the Subterranean King is a total unit. But it turns out the Saitama was just dreaming up the entire epic encounter. The fight was wonderfully animated and has some really great hand-to-hand -hand action. <laughs> Next on our list is the short battle between One Punch Man and the King of Beasts. Now this was a battle that surely made our friends over at Peter happy. I mean, they already accused Pokemon of endorsing animal abuse, so I'm actually surprised they didn't jump on this. Anyway, for this battle, Saitama went toe to paw with Beast King, an artificial mutant sent by Dr. Genus to capture One Punch Man so that he could use him as a human research subject. However, this capture didn't go near as well as these poor, unsuspecting mooks thought it would. As usual, a single hit from Saitama results in this kitty being put down from a disemboweling punch. punch. <laughs> Moving on to number 7, Saitama saves Genos. In a superhero series, it's expected for the titular hero to save the damsel in distress. Even though Genos isn't a damsel per se, he was definitely in distress. And by whom you ask? Well, as it happens, he's in distress because of a damsel. That's if you consider someone like Mosquito Girl, who absorbs the blood her swarms of blood-sucking insect servants harvest from bodies until they're dead husks to even qualify as a damsel especially considering the fact that she was completely merciless with the cyborg in their fight, literally cutting him down to size by taking a limb and slicing him open. But just because she laid down the coup de grace, Saitama went from one punch man to one slap man as he pimp smacked Mosquito Girl into a truly bloody mess across three buildings. <laughs>
かうぜ。Moving on to number six, it's Saitama vs. e r s Carnage Kabuto. For this entry on the list, we finally come face to face with Dr. Genus. The insidious scientist has only one more trump card left to play, and the name of that trump card is Carnage Kabuto, Dr. Genus' e s ultimate mutation. Saitama steps in, and the pair square off within the special chamber of Dr. Genus' e s secret base. And it's in this same episode that we learn the secret of how One Punch Man came to be so strong. Which, as it turns out, was just basic training exercises taken to a maximum level. This leads Carnage Kabuto to take on his ultimate form, Carnage Mode, and attack Saitama with full force. But then our titular character remembers something. He's late for a special sale at the supermarket. This leads him to punch Carnage Kabuto into oblivion and then wail in his lament. Just goes to show you don't get between a person and a store sale. Super At five, we have Saitama vs. e r s Genos. Though this was a practice bout, Genos didn't hold back in any way. We see fluid, motion focused animations throughout this scene. This type of animation style is hardly easy to do, so kudos to the artists and respects to their surely dead wrists for pulling off this frame by frame feat. Anyway, the main point of this practice was for Genos to experience Saitama's strength firsthand after they both passed the National Superhero Registry exam. However, he wanted the bold hero to take it seriously. At first, he didn't, which is something we've all come to expect of Saitama at this point. So when Genos reiterates that he wants his master to be serious in this practice bout, he gets exactly what he wants. <gasps> At number four, we have Saitama destroying the meteor. Prior to Saitama coming in to stop the meteor, several S rank heroes made their own attempts to destroy or even steer the meteor away, but they all failed. Genos made an attempt and seemed like he could pull it off, but he exhausted too much of his body's energy and blaster power that he went into an automatic shutdown. Enter Saitama, every bit the badass he is, as he goes up, up, and away to blast through the ball of rock and fire. The animation for this best moment is more focused on objects and background, which shows how much attention the artist gave to this scene. Again, let's pray for the dead wrists of these hard working creative people. <laughs> Number three, it's the battle against the Deep Sea King. We've talked about Saitama's battles and best moments for most of this list, so at number four, we're going to shift gears and focus on Genos and Moomin Rider. This time, they face the Deep Sea King, a tyrannical ruler of the sea folk and just an all round prick who loves to hurt people. Two things that make this fight worthy of a spot on this list are one, Genos holding his own even when the tides, no pun intended there, shift out of his favor, even risking his life to save a little girl from getting struck by the self proclaimed king's acid spit, and two, the surprise appearance of C class hero Moomin Rider, who fought with Deep Sea King even though he was severely outclassed and kept getting back up even when he was put down. It just goes to show you though, it really isn't the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog. Also, don't worry, One Punch Man arrived soon enough and made Deep Sea King a fish fillet combo. <laughs> In 
in the second to last top moment, we're focusing on the S rank heroes and their battle with an absurdly powerful enemy known as Melzagard. Again, we're changing focus from our titular character to others. In this case, the S rank heroes Silver Fang, Atomic Samurai, Metal Bat, Puri Puri Prisoner, and their enemy, the monstrous alien Melzagard, a member of the Dark Matter Thieves and one of the main antagonists of the Alien Conqueror's arc. It's only when Metal Bat makes a surprising discovery of a marble in one of the separated parts of Melzagard that the heroes figure out how to defeat this monstrous alien. One by one, each of the S-rank heroes makes an awe-inspiring display of their respective skills as they crush each marble. This battle was hardly easy for the S-rank heroes, but nonetheless, they come out victorious and eventually manage to defeat him. <laughs> And finally, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the moment we've all been waiting for. The most epic moment within the One Punch Man series of all time. Or at least so far until Season 2. This moment about Saitama's battle with Lord Boros, the Cyclops-like leader of the Dark Matter Thieves. Much like Saitama, the intergalactic villain deals with an existential crisis in which he lost all three in life after becoming so powerful. How does Lord Boros remedy this? By launching an invasion on Earth to find a worthy opponent as suggested by a prophecy of course, and eventually his search led him to meet One Punch Man. I could go on about what makes this battle number one on the list, but I'll just list the two main points. The first is that Lord Boros actually survived Saitama's fabled one-hit KOs, and the second is that this battle is the longest that Saitama has ever had with any of his past enemies. Both combatants exchange blows and don't hold back whatsoever. Just when it seems like Lord Boros will win, as he uses his ultimate move collapsing Star Roaring Cannon, our bold hero unleashes his own final attack. The serious punch. Truly, Saitama is the strongest hero. So those are my favourite moments from the One Punch Man series, or at least they are the best ones until Season 2 comes along. And if you like my channel then do subscribe, click the notification bell, check out my Twitter and maybe even consider supporting the channel by donating to my Patreon.